We're tracking the new video evidence showing even more advanced planning for the insurrection, including this moment before Trump fans stormed the Capitol. It has begun here at the Washington Monument, Washington, D.C. Say hello to Facebook. Hey, what's going on, man? Glad this to be our, here, bro. This is our fearless leader. Hey, baby. Yeah, him. Check out my flag I made, guys. See it? There you go, baby. <laughs> That's for a certain person. That's right. That's for somebody, somebody special. Somebody special. <laughs> Just a sampling of the menacing mood it continued on with blatant threats against lawmakers. This was all as the insurrection was about to begin. There's no escape, Pelosi, Schumer, Nadler. We're coming for you. We're coming in like white on rice for Pelosi, Nadler, Schumer, even you, AOC. We're coming to take you out. We'll pull you out by your hairs. How about that, Pelosi? You go, might as well make yourself another appointment. I'll get done with you. You're going to need a shine up on top of that bald head. And that's not just another Trump fan recording their own crimes or what would later be trespassing. The January 6th probe is linking him to a controversial Capitol tour led by an incumbent Republican congressman, Barry Loudermilk, on Insurrection Eve. This is a surveillance video from that day. It is now evidence in the probe to how planned this attack was and if there was help on the inside. The same man threatening to, quote, take out lawmakers with that eerie confidence about how far his plans might go appears to be inside the Capitol doing what looks like reconnaissance, scoping out paths, using the cameras you see there, taking what appears to be photos of a very boring staircase. At another point, he is caught, if you look on the left of your screen there, taking photos of what looks like, at the time, an empty hallway. It's not exactly a tourist attraction. And here's how the committee puts it at this juncture after all of their investigation. They formally note that the individuals there recorded areas not typically of interest to tourists, hallways, staircases, and security checkpoints. The details matter. Murder is a crime. When it is pursued, but it fails, attempted murder, also a crime. Same for a failed sedition plot, same for a sedition conspiracy. That's already been charged whether or not you pull off the sedition. As for targeting lawmakers, new evidence shows photos were taken of the office of one of Trump's most persistent targets that you see here. This is also now evidence. Judiciary chair and one-time impeachment leader, Congressman Jerry Nadler. That's his office sign, which appears to be, the inference is, an effort to locate him, as well as other individuals who serve the United States government, who have government jobs, who take an oath to uphold the Constitution. This photo taken there of the majority Democratic staff. The footage appears to also show Congressman Loudermilk leading them, pointing, showing something to the man you see there in a red hat near that corner. Another five people also seen coming down an escalator. Now, today, the congressman is denying that there was anything nefarious to this. He claims the committee did not even get in touch with him to get his perspective about what really happened. But that also undercuts his credibility because there is a public written letter that was sent to him. Well, the Capitol Police, as an independent law enforcement arm, are not identifying what is known right now about that tour as a problem. Now, whether they alone see that as a problem is an evidentiary question. But this new evidence raises other grave concerns amidst two open federal probes in the insurrection. And as a final point, remember... On January 5th, the day before what would be the national security event of everyone, including the vice president, coming to do the routine certification, on that day, the 5th, the whole Capitol was officially and formally closed to tourists. Our coverage begins now with Washington Post reporter Libby Casey and former Watergate prosecutor Nick Ackerman. Uh, Libby, give us the context of how this is coming out now from the committee uh, and without prejudging anything, why at least it does raise grave questions. 
And the committee says that it's asked Congressman Loudermilk to come before them and answer questions, and he hasn't. And so they've released this information publicly now. Uh, one of the problems is that Representative Loudermilk's story has gotten more fleshed out as more evidence has come out. And so at first they weren't really answering questions in his office about the tour. And we're focusing on this accusation of a reconnaissance tour and just sort of pushing aside that possibility. Then he was saying that this was a tour for a family with young children. Well, then it came out that they had friends with them. And so more information has come out from the congressman and his office as more evidence has been laid on the table. And so now, of course, there's this question of the correlation of just, uh, if this is the same individual as the committee asserts that it is, what was he talking with the congressman about when he was on this tour? The congressman is clearly on the tour as well. This wasn't like a staffer had been delegated to do this. And so the committee is saying they want the congressman to come forward and answer questions before them. Yeah, and as you say, in the hierarchy of tours, and I worked you know, on Capitol Hill years back, um, open tourist tours are the most common and the, and the most mellow because all kinds of people can come in in a big group. Uh, staff level tours are a level up because you had to get contact. You can't just get staff to stop their day jobs at any point to give anybody a tour or they'd spend a lot of time doing just that. Um, having an elected <laughs> official, the member of Congress, give the tour is really the highest level. Uh, but for the next highest level, which is doing it on the eve of a national security event when the place is closed. Um, so it doesn't look good for him, although, again, I'm not foreclosing what his defenses may be. Uh, here's how he put it. They've never sent me a letter asking me, never called me. I would have been glad to talk to them about it because there's nothing. There's nothing there. But can you explain who you were giving a tour to that day? Well, it was a, a family and some guests of folks that they brought from Georgia. In Do you video? know who that man was in the video? I, I don't know him. I've never met him before. Nick? This is a pretty weak story, Ari. I mean, this evidence is absolutely damning. First of all, Representative Loudermilk denied ever having given the tour when this first came up. That's just for starters. But he actually had this family, so-called family, on that tour for, I don't know, several hours. And the only places that they went to were the office buildings and the tunnels that connect the main capital. If you go on a tour of the Capitol, you go on a tour of the Capitol, you go inside, you go to the rotunda, you go into the House, you go into the Senate. But this was not a normal tour. Um, you would get bored out of your gourd if you were doing nothing but looking at tunnels and passageways. Yeah, I want to I mean, jump in, Nick. All... I want to jump yep. in to reinforce your point, because it's like sometimes we're talking about stuff that's so obvious the debunking of it almost sounds unnecessary or, or, or dumb, uh, but it's necessary, I think, because of the nature of the dumb defense he gave. And so I just want to underscore what you're saying. Um, yeah, this was not a tour route. The reason that those are kind of anodyne, boring hallways is there's a vast underground walking system uh, that helps members get back and forth from their offices, which are not generally inside the Capitol, from Hart and other office buildings, uh, and get over quickly to vote and back. And that's that's just part of working in the Hill. And so when you take people on the tours, you tend to take them to some of the footage people have seen elsewhere, the paintings, the rotunda, the middle, the voting, uh, view, views of the Senate floor. That's all the beautiful uh, historic stuff. And some of it might look like the Hamilton set. And here, um, they're in the most boring, random basement hallway, um, which, again, might not even be called a tour, uh, really, at all. No. no, by no means. And then you don't take, what do you, what's he taking pictures of? He's taking pictures of security, points, he's taking pictures of tunnels, he's taking pictures of stairways. Um, and then you've got Representative Laudermick actually pointing out certain things. What was he pointing mm. out? I mean, all of this is extremely suspicious. One, in light of his original denial, having said that he gave no such tour. Um, and secondly, uh, the fact that one of those people is actually on tape, as you pointed out in the beginning of this segment, actually saying that he was going after Pelosi, going after Schumer, et cetera. So when you put all of the evidence together, this is extremely suspicious. And on top of it all, it's consistent with what was going on, with the idea that the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers were basically planning a military operation. They went into that capital from two different ends, lined up as you would if you were conducting a military operation. And a key part of any military operation is to do a surveillance beforehand. 
So the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together. We obviously don't have all the glue that ties it together yet, but I think the committee is onto something really yeah. important here.